This slide outlines the design step used to check for the axial strength of the stiffener. The axial looks acting on the stiffener is to be checked against its resistance. The resistance needs to be greater than the load so that the ratio is to be less than 1.0 and it is to be considered pass if the ratio is less than 1.0. To determine the shear loads, the area of the stiffeners to be multiplied with the yield strength of the stiffener divided by factor of safety. As stiffener is normally provided at both sides of the web, therefore the cross-section of the stiffeners in the plan view is to be multiplied with 2. It is assumed that the area loads is resisted by the stiffeners and the web. With that, the axial loads acting on the stiffener, it will be the leftover forces due to the shear loads minus the shear resistance of the web. The shear loads acting on the member, it will eventually be the axial loads acting on the web and the stiffener. As for the axial resistance of the web, it identifies to be the shear resistance of the web. The shear resistance of the web is obtained from these equations. It is the exact equations that we have discussed previously in the design of the shear members. The calculation steps has been discussed in the previous video. Next, we need to determine the shear loads that used to compute the A shear force acting on the stiffener. Assuming that we are designing for the first stiffener here, the effective regions to be covered by the stiffeners it will be here. The shear loads is determined by the boundary limits which is covered by the internal stiffener. In this case, the limit is at 0.5 HW. The closer the boundary to the reactions, the higher the shear loads. With that, the shear loads is obtained at this side, at the distance of 0.5 HW, which is the coverage limits by the stiffener. It is obtained by referring to the shear force diagram and find the exact positions to obtain the regional shear force. Again, when you need to check for the Asia resistance of the following stiffener, you will have to determine the shear resistance at the offset of 0.5 times the HW to obtain the larger shear force acting on the member.